Busby. One day, Mrs. Cat said, "Busby, you are a big kitten now. It is time for you to get a job." Busby twitched his whiskers. "I know how to lie in the sun," he said. "I know how to nap in the grass. I know how to catch mice, but I do not know how to get a job." Busby," said Mrs. Cat, "You can get a job. You are clean, you are polite, and you are a good mouser. Now a few go." Busby walked down the road. He came to Maple Leaf Farm. There was a sign on the gate. It said, "Cat wanted. Must be good mouser." That's me," said Busby. "I have come for a job," he said to Farmer Brown. "Are you a good mouser?" asked Farmer Brown. "I am a very good mouser," said Busby. Just then, a big dog came out of the barn and growled. But I am sure you'll find another good mouser," said Busby, and he walked away quickly. He came to Buttercup Dairy. There was a sign on the fence. It said, "Cat wanted, must be clean." That's me," said Busby. "I am very clean." Step aside, Sonny," said a big gray cat. "There was room for only one cat here, and it is going to be me." I did not want that job anyway," said Busby, and he walked on. Busby came to a town. He saw a big hotel. There was a sign outside the hotel. It said, "Bus boy wanted must be polite." That's me," said Busby. "They did not spell my name right, but they know I am polite." I am your man," Busby said to a hotel manager. "You look more like a cat to me," said the manager. We need a bus boy. A Busby can be a bus boy," said Busby. "A bus boy is important," said the manager. "He works in the dining room. He has to fill all the glasses with ice water. He has to clear all the dishes and empty the ash trays. I can do all of that." Said Busby. "Are you polite?" asked the manager. "Sir," said Busby, "I am very polite." "Well," said the manager, "I guess we can give you a try." Busby walked through the hotel. There was bellboys in blue uniforms. There were maids in white aprons. I am going to like working here," said Busby. He went into the kitchen. "I am your new bus boy," Busby said to the cook. "I have never had a cat for a bus boy," said the cook. "Are your paws clean?" "Very clean, sir." Said Busby. Then you are ready to start," said the cook. He gave Busby a white jacket with brass buttons. "Remember," he said, "we have some very important guests. 
King Oswald is here," he said. "He is sad because he lost his throne. Be nice to him." We have Cecilia Hightown, the opera singer," said the cook. "No one has heard her sing in years, but she is still famous. Be polite to her." I am always polite," said Busby. "All right," said the cook. "Your first job is to pour water into all the glasses. After that, you can clear the dishes." "Yes, sir," said Busby, and he bowed politely. Busby went into the dining room. There were flowers all around. There were pink tablecloths on every table. Three parrots were sitting at the first table. Busby poured water into the first glass. He was careful and did not spill a drop. Busby poured water into the second glass. He was very careful and did not spill a drop. Busby started to pour water into the third glass. I should bow very low to be extra polite, because she is a lady," said Busby to himself. Busby bowed very low. Splash! The ice water spilled all over the lady's dress. La! She cried. Do re mi fa sol la, she trilled. Madam, I am very sorry," said Busby. "Sorry," sang the lady. "So so 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 sorry." I can sing again. Thank you, thank you," she hugged Busby. Everyone clapped. Well," said Busby, "I think it is time to clear the dishes." Busby looked around. A worldless was sitting by himself. He looked lonely. "I will clear his dishes," said Busby to himself. He jumped on the table. "Get Zooks!" cried the walrus. "There is a cat on my table." At your service, sir," said Busby. He bowed politely and started to lick the plates clean. "Don't they feed you in the kitchen?" asked the walrus. "I am not hungry," said Busby. "I am your busboy. I have to clear your dishes." The walrus started to laugh. I have had lots of servants," said the walrus, "but I have never had a busboy like you." Then he laughed some more, "Ho ho ho, ha ha ha!" He laughed so hard that all the other guests started to laugh too. "I am sorry, sir," said Busby. Don't be sorry," said the walrus. "I am King Oswald. I have not laughed this much since I lost my throne." Busby started to get off the table, but he slipped. His hind paws landed in the butter. He tried to stand up, but his paws were too slippery. He spun around and around. A dancing cat! cried King Oswald. What fun! Busby's tail knocked over the vase of flowers. Kerchoo! Busby skidded and somersaulted off the table. Crash! This is better than circus. 
cried King Oswald. Everyone cheered. Yay! Yay! Slam! The kitchen doors opened, and the cook came running out. Bam! The dining room doors opened, and the manager came running in. What is going on? Shouted the manager. I am very sorry, sir," said Busby. "Well," said the manager, "I guess a Busby is not a busboy. You are fired." Busby stood up. He took off his jacket. He walked slowly to the door. "Oh no!" cried Cecilia Highton. "Busby must stay." Yes," said King Oswald. "Busby must stay. If Busby leaves, then I will leave." Wait, Busby," said the manager. "You may not be a good busboy, but you make our guests happy. I think there is a job for you in this hotel after all, sir," said Busby. "What job is that?" You can be our hotel cat," said the manager. "Follow me; I will show you what to do." So Busby got his own uniform, and from then on, he stood at the door of the hotel and looked after all the guests. When his mother came to visit, she said, "See, Busby, I told you you could get a job." You are the best hotel cat in the whole world, and he was.